At St George's, we have been doing research into the type of pain that affects people with arthritis. The patients who attend here at the Hotung Centre for Musculoskeletal Diseases have been helping us with our research. Rheumatoid arthritis is one of the most common forms of arthritis worldwide. It causes inflammation which is driven by the immune system in the body. Patients with rheumatoid arthritis often complain of fatigue, of swelling in their joints and also suffer from a high degree of pain. Many treatments are now available for us to treat rheumatoid arthritis, including medications which can damp down the inflammation of the immune system. These can be used together with painkillers, especially if people carry on having symptoms of pain. When we see people with arthritis in the clinic who have pain and swelling in their joints, we have ways of measuring these changes with scoring tools. The scoring tools can be questionnaires which are filled in by the patients themselves. We as doctors can also find typical changes that can be seen when we examine people with rheumatoid arthritis in the clinic. In the study we have recently performed, we aim to use some tools for measuring pain which have recently been developed by other researchers. These tools have not been used very often to measure pain in the clinic in patients with arthritis. This questionnaire, called the Pain Detect Tool, is a scoring system which asks patients about certain aspects of their pain which we do not usually ask about in the arthritis clinic. These include questions about if their pain makes certain parts of their body feel more sensitive and asks them about the nature of their pain, such as burning, sharp or episodic. New questionnaires have also helped to gather information on whether pain may be inflammatory, which comes from the joints themselves, or could also be partly neuropathic, which means arising from the nervous system. In our work, we interviewed 100 patients with rheumatoid arthritis who have been coming to the arthritis clinic regularly. We collected information about their age, sex, time since they had been diagnosed with arthritis, what treatment they were on, and which painkillers, if any, they were using. Our study interviewed 68 women and 32 men with rheumatoid arthritis at St George's Hospital in London. The tool that we used to measure the activity of their arthritis were the Disease Activity Score, or the DAS-28 score. We also used the following tools to measure pain. The Visual Analog Scale, or VAS, on a 0 to 100 mm rating, and the Pain Detect Questionnaire. These are sometimes called Patient Reported Measures. Our results showed that all the patients we interviewed were on at least one drug for treating their rheumatoid arthritis. These included methotrexate, sulfasalazine, hydroxychloroquine, infliximab, adalimumab, etanercept, and abatacept. We found that although most of the patients were on at least one drug of the list described, with the majority of patients, i.e. 54%, reported high pain levels using the visual analog scale. When we measured the arthritis, we found that the people who reported high pain appeared to have good control of the inflammation in their arthritis, which we measured with the disease activity score. When we measured the scores with the pain detect questionnaire, we found that the results were even more striking, with 5% who had likely neuropathic pain, 28% had possible neuropathic pain, and 67% had unlikely neuropathic pain. We also checked to see if the patient measures of visual analogue scale and pain detect were related to each other, and we found a straight line correlation. We found that the group who had likely or probable neuropathic pain also reported high pain by VAS reporting. We also looked at other risk factors which might cause pain. Other factors which could be affecting the patient's experience of pain include being overweight, smoking or not having their condition fully under control. Interestingly, 
we found that people with rheumatoid arthritis in our study who were clinically overweight with a body mass index of greater than 30 also had statistically higher levels of pain reporting. Our first study was on 100 patients, which is relatively small, so we now plan to extend to a larger study. Our findings suggest that people with rheumatoid arthritis may have several aspects of pain in their condition. Our study showed that there were some patients who had feelings of increased sensitivity to pain. This could explain why they were experiencing ongoing pain even though they were on quite strong treatments for their arthritis. Interestingly, the patients we found in the study who had the increased sensitivity to pain were being treated with the types of drugs that are already being used in the clinic to treat neuropathic pain, for example, amitriptyline and gabapentin. Our results suggest that in the future, questionnaires such as the Pain Detect questionnaire could be used more widely in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. The information that we obtain from questionnaires such as the Pain Detect could be used to gain more useful information about patients' pain and therefore lead to more effective treatments for patients with rheumatoid arthritis in the future.